My name is uh, Ron Russ and I own this plane. It's an RV-12 uh, with a Viking engine on it. I started building this plane about two years ago. And I have to say, in building the RV-12, it's a very simple plane to build. It goes together. The wings I think I built in three or four weeks, pop riveted, draw rivets. And um, it was just an exciting plane. Uh, when I was getting ready for the engine, I ran into a few people. One was a doctor out at an airport who had gotten his plane as far as the firewall. And he sold it. And I was kind of upset. I said, well, why did you sell it? And Dr. Palmer says, I couldn't afford the $28,000 for the engine. And I thought about that. And a while later, I talked to two more people I ran into at uh, Sun and Fun, and they all said the same thing. They got so far and ended up selling their plane because they couldn't afford the engine. So I said, well, let me see. There's got to be an alternative. And I looked into this here, and I started working with Jan. And um, the more I looked at it, it got to be an interesting project. Uh, I worked hard, and uh, we've, we've made some changes. And I don't know. I feel more comfortable flying with this engine than I did with my uh, Lycoming and my RV9A. Uh, it's smoother, it's quieter, and it just hums along. Now, one of the selling points on the engine, I buy 87 ethanol from Kroger. I get the 3 cent discount, or if you spend so much you get a 10 cent discount, and that's cheap gas. Uh, flying down here, I think I paid close to six dollars for 100 LL, which I can burn in here, but the plane likes uh, ethanol or car gas better. So it's been a wonderful project, and you just, when you get in the air, it's exciting. It just, the first time I flew it, I, it took off in 200 feet. I wasn't used to that. I'm used to the RV9 where you pull the stick back and wait and it takes off. This jumped up in the air and caught me off guard. So, um, it performance-wise, two people fully loaded coming down here. It did not take off in 200 feet. We had to take a little longer and ease it up until we got in the air because we were up around 1,300 pounds. But after that, we climbed at about 900 to 1,000 feet a minute with a full load. Cruise down here. We flew from. Calhoun, Georgia, the top end of Georgia, to Thomasville, the lower end of Georgia, in a little over two hours and burned nine gallons of gas. So I thought that was pretty exciting. <laughs> but that's about it. Let's talk a little bit about your engine installation here. As we go well, you get the engine and everything's done. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the mounts are already on the engine. You don't have the prop on it. But what you see from this point back is all supplied. So all you have to do is bolt it to the hard points that are already on the engine from Van's uh, engine mount. Bolt it in, you're ready to go. The engine's mounted. Now, the things you have to put on are the oil cooler. Uh, that comes loose and you have to put, mount a bracket for that. Your overflow. Your high pressure filters here, solenoid. This is Van's uh, uh, brake cylinder. That, and uh, another solenoid over there. And that's basically, basically it. It's pretty simple. You don't see a lot of tubes and things. It's easy to look at and work on. <clears throat> I've got a Dynan two axis autopilot. And it's the one that comes with, the, you can install in the plane. And flying down here, and most people don't realize it, that it's really cool. You, you push the button and it keeps you level. As you pick up different uh, uh, barometric pressure, you get the numbers, you push the button once and it says barometric. You dial in a number and the plane automatically compensates, it goes up. You dial heading, you crank the knob, it goes any heading you want. Then you have the third button is uh, pushes altitude, and you can dial and it'll go up or down. It's fantastic. You flat foot it, you put your feet up high, lean back, and look at the scenery. It's for a sport pilot, we're doing it just like the big boys. Great plane. But one of the changes I made is uh, 
the interior package from Vans is pretty conservative, and I've worked with um, Abby at uh, Flightline Interior on my RV9, and she did uh, custom interior. So what I did is ask for a credit, and I got the full interior. The plane's a little heavier; it's got a lot of add-ons. And I went to the, uh, I think it's called Comfort Foam or Contour Foam, which is quite a bit heavier. I added thicker seats, thicker uh, seat cushions in the bottom. I wanted to sit higher. And I have to tell you, when flying, it's the most comfortable. Yes, they're heavier, but I'll tell you what, the plane with my weight, it's not overweight, and it's, a, it's just a joy to sit and fly in this plane. I did the same for the passenger seats, and that's about it. And the panel's pretty stock, then? The panel's pretty stock. Uh, if you'll see, there is an oil pressure temporary gauge on it. And the reason for that is the, and a lot of people have the problem, the oil sender uh, that goes for the dining uh, quit on me after about 30 hours and started jumping from 60 to 110 while I was in the air and the alarm is screaming. And that was kind of nerving. I didn't like that. Um, but when you, when you go with the Viking engine, you, you want to, don't order the cowling, the engine mount, uh, you don't need that and um, oh it's cheap but uh, the, the fuel pump in the back you're not going to be using that other than that uh, and it's a good credit that's worth about nine hundred dollars so um, that's about it